Mr. Speaker, I, I rise in the place of the people of Colchester, Muscadabit Valley to, to speak to a matter that is having a, a serious impact and a negative impact on the communities and the well-being of the people of our province. Namely, the changes in the employment insurance system being introduced by the Government of Canada. I wish to draw attention this evening to two of these changes in particular. The new, more restrictive EI eligibility rules for the seasonally unemployed and the abolition of the Board of Referees EI appeals system. First, as of January 6th, New regulations have come into force for anyone who has filed for EI three times or more in the last five years. People in this newly formed category are now required from the first day of their EI claim to accept employment that pays them 80% of their previous earnings. And people in this same category, after six weeks, now are newly required to accept a job at 70% of their previous earnings and such employment can be anywhere within a hundred kilometer radius of a person's home. Now those most profoundly affected by these very significant changes in the EI system are employees of course in seasonal industries, those industries which are the complete backbone of the natural resource-based economy of rural Nova Scotia. <laughs> Premier Dexter was absolutely right when he said about this that these changes reflect an astounding failure to comprehend the economic realities of rural life. People who work for example, in the woods, and who are typically each year laid off when the roads close. When that happens, they don't fail to go down to Walmart and apply for jobs as Walmart greeters because somehow they're people that need a little bit of extra prodding. They don't do that because they know that two hours after the roads reopen, they're going to be needed in their normal, regular jobs. And from an employer's point of view, Seasonal businesses of all sorts, from limestone quarrying to the Christmas tree business to landscaping, all, lobster, all, all sorts of seasonal industries are highly dependent. It is in the fabric of their business model that they're dependent upon a trained and experienced workforce being available for recall following cyclical seasonal downturns. And this is precisely what is provided by EI. Prime Minister Harper has said that the purpose of these changes is to encourage more flexibility. Encourage here, however, is exactly the wrong word. The accurate word, the right word to describe what's taking place here would be words like force or pressure or make. Because the real import of these changes is to pressure, is to force, to make people accept lower wage employment than they would otherwise, thereby depressing wages overall and creating an ever more transient workforce, which are the real goals of the Harperist economic program. Two, under the same omnibus legislation which brought about these changes in seasonal EI, the Board of Referees system of EI's appeals has been abolished. Until now, if anyone wished to appeal a decision affecting their eligibility to benefits in EI, they could do so by applying to appeal before the local Board of Referees. And this was a simple system in its composition. The boards all across the country consisted of three appointees, one who was appointed by a local Board of Trade or Chamber of Commerce to represent the business community, one who was appointed normally from a trade union representing the labor movement, and a third who represented, was a government appointee. 
These board members uh, were independent, operating simply on per diems while they did board of referee work. They were not, and this is significant, employees of the EI Commission. Uh, their hearings were held, any MLA knows who has represented a, a, a constituent in that setting, in semi, more or less, informal settings, around a table, settings in which, in other words, one would be able to demonstrate what is often the critical factor in EI eligibility decisions, and that is the credibility, the character, the authenticity of the person that is uh, making their argument about the case, which is something that can not be established in any way better than it can be established around a table, face-to-face, uh, eyeball-to-eyeball with another person. <laughs> that, 100% of that system, which has operated so democratically and made so many opportunities for people to have wrongful bureaucratic decisions reversed and their benefits reinstated, all of that is gone now. It's gone with the current replacement of every board of referees in Canada with a new thing called a social security tribunal, which is composed of full-time now government employed, almost all Ottawa-based tribunal members who will hear submissions now, we are grateful to know, via written submissions. Or even in exceptional cases, we're so gratified to know, via teleconference. In my judgment, Mr. Speaker, it is no accident that the loss of a local face-to-face -face voice in the appeals process is exactly coinciding with new rules which stand to intensify the number of people who are being cut off from their EI. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, this evening I am issuing a challenge. I'm issuing a challenge to Scott Armstrong, the Member of Parliament, for Cumberland, Colchester, Muscadabit Valley, and the federal government's chief apologist on these issues to the people who both he and I represent. And this is a challenge to Mr. Armstrong to debate me publicly on the subject of the EI changes. I challenge Mr. Armstrong to debate me publicly about the EI changes at any place of his choosing. I, I challenge him to debate me before the people who we both represent at any time of his choosing. And I, and, and I, I challenge him to debate me before the people we both represent on the subject of these nefarious EI changes in any format which he would select. Any place, any time, any format, and in any forum which Mr. Armstrong might select. And I issue this evening this challenge on this very important subject, Mr. Speaker, because I believe that the authors of this egregious unfairness should be called to answer for the harm they're inflicting on our people. Thank you.